Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. Another great presentation. We've been doing a series of lectures on antibiotic. Please, please make sure you watch, you watch the previous series, okay? We are going into a different class today. Before I go, let me introduce myself, Dr. Pramil Charya, a physician working in the United States, program director, internal medicine residency, transitional residency. I teach medical students and residents on a daily basis, and associate professor of medicine to a large medical school. Okay? Now, let's get into our topic today. The group is called polymixin. Okay, and then two drugs we're going to talk into that category, which one is polymyxin B and polymyxin E, which is cholestin. And everybody pretty much familiar with the cholestin. It's one of the classic drugs. It's been in the market for a very long time, okay? Now, what does it do? We have the structure right here. Yeah, I mean, let's look at before we go into the first thing, how does it work? Very, very important. If you're taking an exam examination, then definitely the question is going to be how does it work, okay? Now, if you look at it, <clears throat> it has this uh, um, positively charged cyclic decapeptide with a fatty acid chain. Remember that, okay? That's positively charged. Positively char charged cyclic decapeptide with a fatty acid tail. Now, then what happened? I mean, you have a positive, you have to find a negative charge. So it goes to the bacteria, which has negative charge, lipopolysaccharide molecule in the outer membrane. Okay? So they just kind of join together. What happened? It displaces calcium and magnesium ions, and um, uh, which stabilize these lipids. That's what just kind of mess up the calcium and magnesium. And this fatty acid tail right here facilitate the cholesterol into the outer membrane. Okay, and then this uh, cholesterol is so bulky. What does it do? Disrupt the tightly placed liposaccharide molecules uh, that cause increase the permeability through the bacterial cell membrane and results in lysis. That's what the method of destruction, how does the bacteria get destroyed, okay? Now, so let's look at the coverage. What do you see in gram positive? No coverage, why is that? Because gram positive does not have this LPS or lipopolysaccharide in the outer membrane. Remember that. So it's blank, gram positive, no coverage over gram positive. Because if we look back in our first lecture, we talk about the difference between gram positive and gram negative, right? Gram negative is the one have lipopolysaccharide, large amount of lipopolysaccharide, where? In the outer membrane, very, very important point, okay? That's the best way to remember. So if you look at gram-negative, excellent gram-negative coverage, especially like, you know, this huge uh, <clears throat> problem causing bacteria, I mean, pseudomonas, right? Mandro many androbacteria, especially E. coli and Klebsiella, and H. influenza. This is a good coverage for all this. Doesn't have much coverage for the anaerobe, no coverage, okay? Now, <clears throat> we have to also remember the resistance. Usually this... Um, this uh, antibiotic does not have much resistance because we don't use it frequently. In order, if you don't use it frequently, it does it very hard to resistance to develop, right? That's why we have this antibiotic stewardship in, in many hospitals. We closely watch, like, you know, how many times you use vancomycin, all those drugs. The more we use, the more resistance, right? But in this cholesterol, when was the last time have you ever prescribed it? Very rarely. So very hard to develop resistance if you don't use it. It's a classic example for that, okay? Now, the two drugs we talked about, polymyxin B and the polymyxin E, which is cholesterol. Let's look at it. Let's look at the dosage. Polymyxin B, you give IV 15 K, 15,000 to 25,000 um, units per kg per day. And IM also can be given 25,000 to 30 thousand units per day. Intrathecal can be given 50,000 every day, okay? Now, renal failure, you just use a reduced dose like 15,000 units. Yeah, when you look at cholestine, you just give 2.5 to 5 mg per kg per day. You divide that into like two to four doses. And the renal failure, you decrease the dose based on the creatinine clearance. If the creatinine clearance is 50 to 79, you get like 2.5 to 3.8 milligram per kg. If the creatinine clearance is between 30 to 49, use 2.5 mg per kg. Then 10 to 29, use 1.5 kg, okay? Now 1.5 mg per kg. The first one, if um, creatinine clearance 50 to 79, you dose it maybe, you can do twice a day. But... 30 to 49 and 10 to 29, you do like around 36 hours. 
Okay, that's the dosage you have to do. Yeah, just look at it, summarize like one more time, polymixin B, you got a cyclic decapeptide and a fasci acid chain. What is it? You got a positively charged the cyclic decapeptide with the fasci acid chain combined with this negative charge, LPS, lipopolysaccharide, only in what? Gram negative, don't forget it, okay? And then that cause depletes the calcium and magnesium, uh, destabilize this uh, LPS, and then fatty acid chain kind of penetrate into the membrane. Uh, the bulkiness of the cordless chain disrupt the LPS molecule, increase the permeability, lysis happens. Okay, look at the coverage. No coverage for gram positive again because it does not have lipopolysaccharide. Mainly gram negative has this large amount of lipopolysaccharide. LPS so is going to work mainly on this. Look at the doses. And I forgot to mention the <clears throat> earlier the toxicity, nephrotoxicity and neurotoxicity. It's pretty much the same in both. Uh, neurotoxicity, kind of dizziness, weakness, ataxia, paresthesia, and vertigo. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with another presentation. God bless.